Elmer McCurdy was one of the most unlucky bank and train robbers in the Old West. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Elmer McCurdy was born in Washington, Maine in 1880. His mother Sadie was very young and unmarried, which was not in fashion at the time. In order to save Sadie the embarrassment and shame of raising an illegitimate child, her brother George and his wife Helen adopted Elmer. However, Sadie eventually told her son that she, not Helen, was his mother, and that she was unsure of who his biological father was. The news disturbed McCurdy, who grew resentful and became unruly and rebellious. As a teenager, he began drinking heavily, a habit he would continue throughout his life. McCurdy eventually decided to live with his grandfather and became an apprentice plumber. He was a competent worker and lived comfortably until the economic downturn of 1898. McCurdy lost his job, and in August 1900, his mother died of a ruptured ulcer, and his grandfather died of Bright's disease the following month. Shortly after these events took place, McCurdy left Maine and began drifting around the eastern United States, where he worked as a lead miner and plumber, but was unable to hold a job due to his alcoholism. He eventually made his way around Kansas, where he picked up small jobs as a plumber in Cherryvale and then in Lola, where in 1905 he was arrested for public intoxication. Looking to start over again, he then moved to Webb City, Missouri. In 1907, at the age of 27, McCurdy joined the U.S. Army. Assigned to Fort Leavenworth, McCurdy was a machine gun operator and was briefly trained to use nitroglycerin for demolition purposes. He was honorably discharged from the Quartermaster Corps almost four years later. McCurdy then made his way to St. Joseph, Kansas, where he met with an army friend. On November 19th, McCurdy and his friend were arrested for possessing burglary paraphernalia, like chisels, hacksaws, gunpowder, and money sacks. The St. Joseph Gazette reported that during their arraignment, McCurdy and his friend told the judge the tools were not intended for burglary purposes, but were tools they needed to work on a foot-operated machine gun they were inventing. In January 1911, a jury found McCurdy not guilty. At this point, Elmer was released from the county jail and his short-lived career as a bank and train robber began. His robberies were generally bungled affairs due to his ineptitude. McCurdy decided to incorporate his training with nitroglycerin into his robberies. This often caused problems as he was overzealous and failed to correctly determine the proper amount to use. By March 1911, Elmer had again relocated to Lenapaw, Oklahoma, and on March 24th, he and three other men decided to rob the Iron Mountain, Missouri Pacific train number 104 after he heard that one of the cars contained a safe with $4,000. They successfully stopped the train and located the safe. McCurdy put the nitroglycerin on the safe's door to open it, but used too much. The safe was destroyed in the explosion, as was the majority of the money. McCurdy and his partners managed to net $450 in silver coins, most of which were melted and fused to the safe's frame. Several months later, on September 21st, McCurdy, 
and two other men attempted to rob the Citizens Bank in Chautauqua, Kansas. After spending two hours breaking through the bank wall with a hammer, McCurdy placed a nitroglycerin charge around the door of the bank's outer vault. The blast blew the vault door through the bank, destroying the interior, but did not damage the safe inside. McCurdy then tried to blow the safe door open with nitroglycerin, but the charge failed to ignite. After the lookout man got scared and ran off, McCurdy and his accomplices stole about 150 in coins that were in a tray outside the safe and took off into the night. Later, the men hopped a train which took them to the Kansas border. They split up and McCurdy made his way to the ranch of a friend, Charlie Rivard, near Bartlesville, Oklahoma. He stayed in a hay shed on the property for the next few weeks and drank heavily. His final robbery took place just a month later, on October 4th, near Okessa, Oklahoma. McCurdy and two accomplices planned to rob a Katy train after hearing that it contained $400,000 in cash. It was intended as a royalty payment to the Osage Nation. Unfortunately, McCurdy and the men mistakenly stopped a passenger train instead. They were able to steal only $46 from the mail clerk, a little whiskey, a revolver, a coat, and the train conductor's watch. A newspaper account of the robbery later called it one of the smallest in the history of train robberies. McCurdy was disappointed by the haul and returned to Rivard's ranch on October 6th, where he began drinking the whiskey he stole. By this time, he was also ill with tuberculosis, which he had developed after working in mines, and with a mild case of pneumonia and trichinosis. He stayed up drinking with some of the ranch hands before going to sleep in the hayloft. Unbeknownst to McCurdy, he had been implicated in the robbery, and a $2,000 reward for his capture was issued. In the early morning hours of October 7th, a posse of three deputy sheriffs, brothers Bob and Stringer Fenton, and Dick Wallace tracked McCurdy to the hay shed using bloodhounds. They surrounded the hay shed and waited for daylight. McCurdy was killed by a single gunshot wound to the chest, which he sustained while laying down. In a strange twist of fate, McCurdy's body was cleaned up and over the next 30 years, displayed in funeral homes, sideshow carnivals, wax museums, movie theaters, and other places for profit. Sixty-six years after his death, in April 1977, Elmer's body was released to the Indian Territory Posse of Oklahoma and finally laid to rest next to fellow outlaw Bill Doolin in the Boot Hill section of Summit View Cemetery in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you found this valuable. Please be sure to subscribe, and if you like the video, please hit that like button and share it to your favorite Facebook group. Have a great day.